Episode 22. Today's topic, cultural relations and fantasy worlds. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram, and I'm here today to talk about cultural relations. When I talk about cultural relations, it's from two perspectives. How does a culture deal with new stimulus? And no, I don't mean bank bailouts. I mean new information that they've been previously unaware of. And more obvious way, how do they deal with other cultures around them, especially ones that they know about and have been established? So the first thing I'd like to talk about is how do they react to something new? And this can completely vary from culture to culture. Some cultures are more curious, some are less curious, some are more violent, some are less violent. But how does your culture deal when they are introduced to something new in the environment? Let's say, for example, you're fishing, and you fish every day. You fished every day for 40 years, and all of a sudden you see a ship on the horizon. And it's not the ship of your enemy. It's a ship you've never seen before. Or maybe you've never seen a big ship before, like an ocean-going vessel. And for the first time you see one, how are you going to react to that? Are you going to run back and tell your lord? Are you going to go out and meet the ship? Maybe people from the whole village will go out and meet the ship. Maybe they will give them food, they'll put little flowers around their necks, or maybe they're going to go kill them and eat them. I don't know. It's your culture. How do they react to something different? So especially when you get into fantasy worlds, or even in our world, early on if you meet someone of a different color, you know, what we call race here on Earth, you, you might have a different reaction. Or you meet a new species of animal, something not sentient you're going to have a kind of reaction if you've never seen anything like it before. And part of it's going to be like something new. Uh, it's going to depend on how violent you are, how unviolent you are, how much you respect its intelligence. Maybe you're trying to do a test to figure out the intelligence of the other thing to determine how you're going to react to it. But in fantasy worlds or in sci-fi, it's more complicated because there's usually an acceptance that there are other races out. So if I, as a human, meet a minotaur tomorrow, I am running. I don't care. I have a stereotype of minotaurs in my head. I'm afraid he's going to eat me. If I can get out of the maze I'm trapped in, I'm going to just keep running. If I'm in the maze, I'm going to keep running. Hopefully the minotaur won't get me. That's bad. How do you react to people of different cultures? This will in some way be culturally influenced. Keep it away from the way individuals are going to react. And don't think that the two are synonymous. And depending on the culture, there could be a huge swing in this. It might not be important to the culture how you react to other people of the same culture. I'm sorry, to a different, how you react to people of a different culture. So maybe the culture has aversions to outsiders. They're, they're xenophobic. They're going to have a certain kind of reaction. Maybe they're going to go hide. Maybe they're going to attack. I'm uncertain. But it's going to be a negative reaction if there's, if the, if they lend, if they tend towards xenophobia. Now, if they tend towards, uh, xenophilia, they're going to want to go out and interact with the new culture as soon as they meet it. They're going to want to learn all about it, maybe start trade relations, share some food back and forth. It's all going to depend a lot on the culture. But you need to know for your culture how they're going to react. Of all of the cultures that are around your culture, are there any they hate? Do you have sort of the English-French thing going on or the German-French thing or one of the many European hatreds for each other or maybe a tribal animosity like you might see somewhere in Afghanistan or in the Middle East or in a more tribal area? It's really not just Afghanistan. Anywhere in the world there's tribes. There are tribes that have animosity towards other tribes, and it's almost tradition. And you need to know those when they're tradition. And what are the typical cultural leanings like, a, cu a culture isn't going to have a tendency to want to attack right away. Individuals within the culture might. However, that can vary culture to culture. You have to make that determination. 
Are there other cultures that your culture hates? What is the reaction when they meet on the street? Now, is this culture sympathetic to any other cultures? Maybe it's a very similar culture. Maybe they have some of the same ideals. Maybe they have the same religion. But what cultures have a, ten a tendency to be sympathetic towards each other? For example, it's not shocking that the U.S. went to war against Germany in World War I on the side of Britain. Even though Britain had been our enemy, even, even really past World War I at times, uh, we have common language, common religions. There's a little bit more understanding back and forth. And that sort of lent us to being allies over time. So are there other cultures on the opposite end of the hate scale that your culture has a sympathy for? And once again, how do they react when they meet them? So if you have a band of traders from the Padrakan culture, and they run into a band of traders from the Syrian culture, and they're sympathetic or negative, they hate each other, what's the reaction going to be? Now, in relations with other cultures, other sentient beings, what is a sympathetic reaction from that culture? What is the I like you reaction when they meet you? And on the other end, what is the negative reaction when they meet you? For example, maybe I believe you can tell a demon by the color of its blood. All sentient beings are known to have red blood. And if it has Moab blood, it's evil. It's a demon. So when people come to meet people of my culture, you have to cut yourself and show us the blood. That way we know you're not a demon in our first interaction. Now, if you don't do that, we have a negative reaction automatically. And that is to attack you, to cut you, and find out what your blood looks like. Now, your culture might have a negative reaction to being cut, and it might lead to conflict. However, that is a potential for a cultural interaction. That would also be the negative version. Maybe the positive version is, you cut your hand so I can see your blood. I know you're a good guy, so I invite you into my home for food, even though I don't know you. I don't bear weapons at you, even though I don't know you. And that's my positive reaction towards you. Now, are there any exceptions to the reaction? And here's a good example. And some of these things, if you haven't thought of yet, Go back, update your cultural uh, norm chart to add in important ones. And for me, interactions are very important for a culture. But now let's look at an exception. So we have Marjorie. She's from another culture. Marjorie comes over and she properly cuts herself and I can see the blood on her hand. Yay. She's not a demon. Woohoo! Come on in to my house and we are going to have a feast to honor Marjorie who's visiting us. She's the first person from that culture to ever visit us. I'm so excited. She comes in. We have a feast. She goes to sleep at night. That night, a comet shoots through the sky so close that it is almost burning in the atmosphere. This, to me, is a very evil omen. The only thing that's changed for me is Marjorie is now here. What is my reaction to Marjorie? Now, some might have negative Maybe she, I think she's running from something that I want to help her. I don't know. What's the cultural generic reaction to that scenario? And once again, these are all food for thoughts. This is really an expansion of cultural norms and cultural values. If you haven't thought of these kind of things and they come up in your story, make sure to have them on that chart so you can deal with it. If it's really important, it should be on the chart. And if it's in the story, it should probably be on the chart as well, too. The rating for this episode is basic. Once again, you need to know how a culture is going to react in general to a different culture. The only time this will not be basic is if in the confines of what you're releasing to the world does not have anything but one culture. In it. Now, I would say that would be a mistake, but hey, that's the way I like to write. The way you want to write is, or the way you want to run games is up to you. If there are no other cultures, it's not important. But I think it's an easy way to to tell your characters what are appropriate actions um, when they're interacting with people, even inside of the culture. The world building task for the day is list your main culture's relations. Just all the things I've listed there, go ahead and jot them out. If you have any other ones, send them to me and let me look at them. And maybe I'll modify my, my list based off of what you look at because I think it's an important reaction to consider as well, too. <coughs> but. 
list your main culture's relations with other people around them and go through the chart and say, hey, here, here's how we deal with new. Here's how we deal with unusual. This is what we do. The real world task for the day. Hug, look, love, and kiss. That should be a hashtag. I might have to create the hashtag when I put this one out there. But what I'm saying with hug, look, love, and kiss. When you are upset with someone that you care about, hug them, look at them, tell them you love them, and give them a kiss. And be genuine. If you're fake, don't even try it. If you don't mean it at the moment, wait till you can first possibly do it. But hug them, look at them, tell them you love them, and give them a kiss. It will maybe not make everything better, but it will help ease tension. And especially if you're in a, a circumstance where you're either having an argument or maybe they're having a rough day and it's not even about you, it's a good way to help diffuse tension. And this doesn't have to be a person you love, like a spouse. It could be a parent, a sibling, a friend. Not Maybe you're not a kissing friend, but modify it slightly if you're not in a kissing position with that friend. But, you know, once again, you know, you want people to know that you care about them. That's a base human emotion, you know, is to want to be cared for. And if you express your caring for someone else, it will make their life a little easier. The tease is cultural fashion show. And by this, obviously, I mean a fantasy cultural fashion show. And really, I'm going to be talking about appearance, but there's going to be a great image that gets released with this. It looks awesome. It's my new fall line of clothing. You want to run out and buy it as soon as you see it, I'm sure. I'll release it when I release the episode. I had a lot of fun making it. My wife did not. But once again, tune in next time for the Fantasy Cultural Fashion Show. And as always, make sure to go to Garduel.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com for the show notes. It'll be under Podcasting, World Builders Anvil. That's a great place to get all of the information from the episode that you've just listened to and to see all the resources that we've talked about in this episode. Thanks for joining us this episode of the World Builders Anvil. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes and please help get the word out to your friends about our show. And join me, Jeffrey W. Ingram at Garduel.com to see the progress of my world and learn why I made the choices I did. And please contact me and let me know the topics you would love to hear in the future. Now strike, why the myth rolls high.